Please stand. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, as a servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, grant us wisdom to recognize the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven, that we may never despair, but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture lesson. The Old Testament reading for this eighth day after Pentecost comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and chapter 2 and selected verses, and it is to the basis for today's message by myself. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the preacher, have been over king, king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. 
It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and striving after wind. I hated all my toil in which I toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me, and who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow and his work is a vexation. Even in the night his heart does not rest. This also is vanity. There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also I saw is from the hand of God. For apart from him who can eat or who can have enjoyment, for, for to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he has given the business of gathering and collecting only to give one who pleases God. This also is vanity and striving after wind. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle comes from Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, with what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek or Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, scavian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And the Holy Gospel comes from Luke chapter 12, beginning at verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his passion. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? He said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink. Be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. After hearing the word of our Lord, we boldly confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn, 861, Christ Be My Leader. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You heard it here earlier tonight from the Old Testament reading, which is the basis for my message, but specifically this verse from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. This is our text, dear friends in Christ Jesus. Amen. Time flies when you're having fun, but all these good things do come to an end at some point. For this week is my last week as being a vicar here at St. Paul Napoleon, and it's fitting that my actual final day is on a Sunday. I started on a Sunday, and I'll end on a Sunday. But before we get into the message you'll hear tonight, I again want to thank you as a congregation. You as a congregation are fantastic. Without you, I again would not be the vicar that God wanted me to be. And again, this everyone here felt like family. And I didn't even know who you were, but you guys felt like family. And I remember that first day very vividly. It actually was, I was installed, or not installed, um, welcomed into the congregation also on Ella's baptismal day. So it was a very special day, trumpets and everything. I got a little little teary-eyed. I remember that day. But I was so thankful for being called here because it truly has blessed me and will bless my future ministry in the church. And I've learned so much from this congregation, um, from going on visits, preaching, leading Bible studies, helping with confirmation, the list could go on and on. But it was all to help you. But also the congregation is so blessed by amazing pastors here. The pastors here truly care for this congregation and will 
will do anything at the drop of a dime to come to you. And I'm not just saying that because my vicar's report is still being turned in. It is true. They are good pastors, and every pastor in the area and in the world should look at Pastor Marcus and Pastor Shiwi and model after them. Drive towards to what they are as pastors. And I also want to thank all the teachers, workers here, staff, volunteers here at St. Paul, for they also helped in everything that I was doing, especially the youth. That truly was an enjoyment down in Houston, even though it was a little hot. It truly was a blessing to be a part of this great ministry here at St. Paul, and it truly has blessed me and my family for my future as being a pastor. So I again want to thank you, but words, the, all these words cannot describe for how thankful I am for being your vicar this path, for this year. And again, I could talk for my entire sermon thanking you guys for what you have done for me. And I would love to do that, but you guys came here to get the gifts, to hear the gospel. Yet, this Old Testament reading, there's not really a ton of gospel when you hear it. Where, where's, where's the gospel? It's just a bunch of vanities, and I'm not talking about the vanity you want back in your bedroom or bathroom. I'm talking about the vanity of vanities. And in, in today's Old Testament reading, we get this interesting section from the book of Ecclesiastes. And if you have your Bibles in front of you, or the next time you're going through your Bible, look at chapter 1 of this book, where it starts out in a very interesting way. But we also don't see this book a lot in the three-year lectionary, so the reading series we follow, we have A, B, and C, we only see this book twice, here tonight, and then we see Ecclesiastes chapter 5. So we don't hear a lot from the preacher, which is the title of this book. The, the Greek title is Ecclesiastes, but the, the Hebrew title is The Preacher, or Koeleth is the Hebrew word, and there's actually a better translation. It's not just a guy preaching all the time. It could also be translated as teacher or giver of wisdom. And like I said, this preacher is doing a lot more than just preaching. And this preacher is a lot more than a vicar. He is the son of David, king of Jerusalem. You could probably find out who that was or who that is. For it is Solomon. Solomon is the son of David who becomes the king of Jerusalem. He is that preacher. And Solomon, like his father David, was blessed with many riches, especially wisdom was given to Solomon. And he didn't just write Ecclesiastes, he wrote two other books, the Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs, and then Proverbs. And here at St. Paul, we went through it, had a series on how to handle your money in a godly way, and we looked a lot at the book of Proverbs. So Solomon is very good with his words and very, uh, has a lot of wisdom that was given to him. And he gave it to God's people. Yet, Ecclesiastes does not really start out with this great wisdom or this upbeat proverb. Because right after he introduces himself as the preacher, Solomon says this phrase. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. And this is from the ESV translation, and the KJV also says this. But the NIV makes a little bit more sense if you don't know what vanity means. For NI, the NIV says this. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. I think Solomon would be a pretty good guy to take to a party, right? Maybe. I don't know. If everything's meaningless, 
Is everything meaningless? Is Solomon right? Is he right in saying that everything we do is meaningless? Not even this vicarage has anything to do with anything. It's just meaningless. So, if everything's meaningless, what's the point? What's the point of trying to live our lives? Solomon was given everything by God. He had all the luxuries of life, but he still says everything is meaningless. How can Solomon have all this wisdom, all this strength, all this stuff, yet there's no meaning in life? So Solomon is saying that life is pointless and all we need to do is mope around and say, oh, everything is meaningless. But what if, what if Solomon is right about this? Is life meaningless? Well, Phil Connors thought life was meaningless. If you know who Phil Connors is, he's, he's this character in this uh, movie called Groundhog Day, played by Bill Murray. And it was a movie in 1993, which was four years before I was born, but I have seen the movie, great movie. And this, his character, Phil Collins, who is a weatherman, relives February 2nd, which is Groundhog Day, so the title of the movie. And he relives it over and over again. And some viewers think that Phil Connors relived this day for three decades, so 30 years older than I've been alive. But what does, so Phil Connors is reliving this day over and over again. What does he do? What is he doing to cope with this prison? What does he try and do to find meaning when it seems like nothing he's doing is changing anything in his life? Well, if you've seen the movie, he does a bunch of different experiences to try to find Happiness, and if, again, if you've seen the movie, he does a lot of crazy things to try and move on to the next day. But he keeps ending up back to February 2nd. He tries all these things in his quest to find something, find meaning. But no matter what he does, nothing comes his way. And Solomon and Phil Connors might be the same person, for they both think life means nothing. Life has no meaning. They are right. But life has no meaning if there's no Jesus. Jesus gives us meaning in life. If we try to find meaning in our lives, we will find nothing. Jesus gives us a meaning. But why does Jesus need to give us a meaning in life? What caused our lives to be utterly meaningless? Solomon thought that life was meaningless, so he got it from somewhere. Well, we need to go back to the beginning and find where all this vanity came into our lives. Let's go back to Genesis. God just finished creation, and it was good. Creation was not, nothing was going wrong with it. Everyone, uh, the animals, the humans were all living together. And we as God's creatures also had a meaning to live. We were to love the Lord with all our heart, and we did. And we also were to watch over God's creation and what he has done for us. Vanity did not exist. Life had a meaning. Yet, if we go further into the story, it doesn't last that long. For Adam and Eve's meaning was to get, they gave in to temptation, they gave into meaningless ideas, and they thought they could become like God. They disobeyed God, and sin came into the world through them. 
because of Adam and Eve's fall into this sin and into this temptation, we are affected by it. We are all tainted with this sin, and this, this scar makes us, makes our lives meaningless. And we become the vanity of vanities, for we are meaningless. Yet, does God leave us high and dry? Does he leave us hanging? For he does not. For thanks be to God, he did something about it. He gave us meaning. He saved us from our meaningless lives. He gave us a reason to live. God sent his son, Jesus, into the world so that we would be restored back to what God originally intended for us to do. And that was to worship the Lord with all our heart and watch over his wonderful creation. Jesus was sent here for us. For we all know this from John. For John 3.16. So let us say that together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus gives us that meaning in life. We don't have to go out looking for this meaning in anything, for Solomon is right in saying everything is meaningless. Yet Jesus gives us this meaning so that everything we say and do for the Lord has a purpose, has a meaning. But what about those dark days where we feel truly meaningless. We ask, what is the point? For example, you have no joy in your job and you question why you even got this job in the first place. Your family doesn't feel like a family and you feel that you have to do everything on your own. You have to raise yourself. School seems boring, and you feel like you don't have anyone to talk to, no friends. Your health seems to never be right in your life, and it always seems to be changing and never is the same. And your thoughts and feelings keep telling you that you're meaningless. This list could go on and on, for life is hard. And we keep asking, what is the point? Why deal with all these struggles? Where is God anyway? Well, Jesus does remind us that this life will be tough, especially when we follow him. For he says, you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he doesn't just say, you can do it, I'll, I'll leave you. For he says that he will always be with us, even in these times of meaninglessness. Jesus is there. He is there in our times of sadness. He is there in our times of depression. And he is there in our times of anxiety. He is there. He is there. Jesus promised to be with his people. He, and he is still with us today and will be with us forever. For Jesus reminds his disciples when he is leaving with his great commission, he just told them to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and go out and teach. But he also says this, and behold, and when you see that in the Bible, pay attention. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. And the, the Greek there just basically says forever and ever and ever. He will always be there. And we take heart knowing that even during these times when we feel meaningless, we know that Jesus is there every step of the way and he gives us that meaning. Our job has meaning. Our family has meaning. Our lives have a meaning because of what Jesus has done for you and me. 
even just this one year of vicarage has a meaning because of what Jesus has done. And Jesus works through all our lives and whatever we do so that others might see him. A famous church historian said this, if Christ is risen, nothing else matters. If Christ is not risen, nothing else matters. Without Christ, everything is meaningless. But with Christ, we have something, something to look forward to, something to hope for. We don't die this meaningless death, for we will rise again when Jesus comes again in in his glory. We just confess that in our creed. For we are the children of God, and we will be with our Father forever. So as you go out of this place, know that you are loved by God because of what he has done through Jesus. And no matter what you are going through, your life is special in God's eyes because of what Jesus has done. And in that name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep and guard your hearts in Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. It truly has been a blessing to serve you here as vicar for this year. And I, again, thank you for the wonderful blessings we have received here and the wonderful education I have received here as well. It truly has been a special opportunity for me to experience what St. Paul does every single day. And we thank God for what he has given to us, that even though our lives might seem meaningless, he has given us a meaning through Christ. And we continue to give back to what God has done in the many ways here at St. Paul, to continue what God has called us to be and to be followers of Christ. And we continue to praise God in our next hymn, hymn 771, Be Still My Soul Before the Lord. Please stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray. In life, it seems that all is meaningless, Lord. Without you, there is no beginning, and forever with you would not be possible. Because of what your son Jesus has done for us, we can enjoy that grace that you have given to us. Thank you for giving us a meaning 
continue to guide us with your word and spirit. I thank you, Lord, for blessing my family during this time, uh, during our vicarage year at St. Paul. It truly has been a blessing and continue to guide us as we go for our fourth year at seminary. Guide us as we strengthen, strengthen ourselves during this time and prayerfully consider what you have called us into being. And we come before you, Lord, with joyful hearts as we celebrate with John and Aline Hammond who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Continue to strengthen their marriage and point them to you who brought them together in this holy union. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving Jeff a new phase in his life. Life seems to always be changing, but you are always constant. Strengthen Jeff with your word and continue to guide him in this new phase of life he's experiencing. Along with this joy, we also have people who are dealing with sadness. We pray for the family of Sherry Levesque. Watch over the family and remind them of your son's resurrection that this death is not a meaningless death, but truly is the start of forever with you. We pray for the bereaved, and we also pray for ill and hospitalized. We as your people, Lord, still are on this side of heaven and are dealing with the hardships of this life. Strengthen our bodies and bring us back to a healthy way of life. We name before you Dave Crandall, Bob Bruns, John Glick, Kay Beam, Mike Huber, Jim Fouts, Jane Heffel, Matt Von Sagren, Tim Wyrick, Cody Bird, Herman Wenzel, Mark Spies, Tom Harms, Ellie Fechner, Billy Heffel, Robin Espen, Pam Nagel, Becky Deal, Brandon DeGroff, Eric Roars, Sarah DeShong, Cheryl Doyle, Taylor Dickinson, Michelle Robinson, David Ferreira, Larry Hertzfeld, Rick Hofer, Melissa Greer, and Terry White. As we pray for the people of this church, we continue to pray for this nation and the people who protect this country. We are so thankful for what you have provided for us in this country. We are so grateful for the men and women who protect us. Guard all who serve here in this nation and throughout the world. Remind them that even during the perils of war, you are always with them no matter what. Watch over. MMN2, Lena Lurch, First Lieutenant Bryant Slade, Major Brad, Staff Sergeant Brendan Bosselman, Major John Campbell, MMN2, Jacob Lurch, Lieutenant Tiffany Lurch, Specialist Derek Kors, Private First Class Emma Kors, Sergeant First Class Joshua Bell, Petty Officer Camden Short, Lieutenant Colonel Doug Benneke, Specialist Zach Miller, Staff Sergeant Chris and Deborah Hoffman, Captain Richard Snyder, Specialist Tristan Friedhoff, Staff Sergeant Alex Zavakis, Staff Sergeant Zarin Carr, Senior Airman Taylor Baker, Lieutenant Colonel Kyle, Captain Daniel Rudolph, Warrant Officer Jeremy Went, Specialist Paul Lippick, Technical Sergeant Benjamin Lease, Private Gage Dalton, Private Grace Hopkins, Specialist Grant Lugo, Airman Maxwell Phillips, Airman First Class Landon Moore, Private Andrew Leverett, and Air National Guard Trainee Carter Niekamp. Lord, you have given us a reason. Jesus, has given us a reason to praise your name. And we continue to go to you in prayer as we sing the prayer that you have taught us.
Now go with the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our final hymn, 761, Rock of Ages Cleft for Me. Thank you. 